Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Welcome to Midday with LaJean and Valora. We're excited to be with you guys on this beautiful, beautiful Monday afternoon. Blessings, blessings. As you come on, please share the broadcast. Let others know that we are on. We are here and uh, we are excited to be with you guys. Yes, hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, magnify the name of the Lord with us and let us exalt his name together. Welcome, welcome as you come on. Again, God bless you from Chicago. Blessings to you, Stella Grace, too, and BDN30. Blessings to you. Love you, Shanika. Blessings. Amen. Co-pastor of Contagious Charlotte. God bless you, Ranjira. Blessings to you guys. Thank you. All the way from Jerusalem. Blessings to you. God bless you um, from California. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We, we're grateful for your testimonies. Thank you for your continued support um, in, in receiving and helping us to do what God has called us to do. And uh, many testimonies of how you've been blessed by our broadcast. And we certainly appreciate that. God is amazing. And we're here to equip, empower, and to encourage you. Amen. And so we're all one family. Amen. Cleveland, Ohio is here. Blessings. Thank you so much. Thank you, Debbie, for joining us. Bless you, Terry. You've been continuously supporting us, and we certainly appreciate that. Um, in the way of announcements, really, really excited about um, our upcoming Suddenly in Arkansas, Little Rock, Arkansas. And um, so please, if you're in those in the area close to it, three hours, four hours, five hours away, please get there by any means necessary. You can certainly um, register at Lejean and Valora forward slash eventbrite.com. It's on Eventbrite. <clears throat> so you can certainly register for that. It's going to be a life changing um, event. Um, there in Arkansas. We've never ministered in Arkansas, and that's my husband's hometown, so we're super elated. Um, along with us being there also will be Apostle John Eckhart, Jojo Dawson, and a prophet um, Kyle Miller will be there with us as well. And so um, there's a lot of buzz, a lot of people excited and have been wanting us to come for several months. And um, God has opened a door for us to be there. Um, we have the event, the venue. You can certainly go to our website um, to learn more about that. And that is lejeanandvalora.com. And the way of another announcement is uh, Fearless Women and a Fearless Women um, on here today. Well, October the 6th, October the 6th, we will be having a women's gathering here. Um, and um, so we certainly want you to take part if you're available and in the area. And um, it's not a conference, but it is a gathering. And uh, so we're excited to, to have that. And a lot of people have really already asked, um, said that they were coming and they're registering. You can certainly register again through Eventbrite. It's a free event, but we certainly want you to register because we are keeping connect through your friends and so they can take part and be blessed um, as well so continue to share um, the broadcast and let people know that we are on so they can take part as well um, and so we certainly again want to welcome all of our suddenly family um, to take part in this broadcast God bless you, uh, Terrence uh, Turner. You all have continued to be a blessing. Even some of you were on this morning during our time of prayer and intercession, powerful time um, in the Lord. So thank you for praying. Thank you for your willingness to stand in the gap. And uh, I tell you, God is just really bringing people from all around the world to come together so that we can ensure that his perfect will is manifested in the earth. Yes. yes. So I want to give you two scriptures today. I want to read a couple pieces. Um, I think one thing that I wanted to share with you guys is um, just how God has been moving and how God has done some amazing things in our life. And uh, I wanted to give you um, the text. And my wife showed you, talked, shared with you. Uh, but if you go to our website. At this point, we have a free chapter from our book. For those of you who have not read the book and have not had opportunity to check the book out, uh, we'd love for you to get the free chapter. And then, if you know, those of you that are family members and friends of ours, if you would help us by sending at least five to ten people uh, that you know to go get a free to get the free chapter, I think it'll bless them. Uh, and that the free chapter also includes the chapter by Apostle Eckhart. 
Uh, and so for those of you who have never read the book, we'd love for you to go and download that free chapter just so you can get a sample of how we write and uh, how we do things. Then tomorrow night, we're going to do Pillow Talk. We forgot about that. Yes. Uh, and then, uh, of course, you talked about the mega suddenly October 18th and 19th that's going to be in Little Rock, Arkansas. But then you didn't say anything about the Spiritual Warfare Academy. Yes. And so uh, so the Spiritual Warfare Academy, October 26th and 27th. And uh, we're actually um, we're actually almost finished with a new book uh, about spiritual warfare. And I really believe it's going to be tremendous because I've never seen anybody write it from the perspective that we're writing from, mm -hmm. which is more of a military perspective and looking at war and actual combat and things like that to include that inside the thought of, of doing uh, basically spiritual warfare. So at any rate, I think that's going to be tremendous. Mm -hmm. And so you'll see that uh, be October 26th and 27th. And we're looking forward to connecting with you guys on that day. So I want to read to you uh, a paragraph out of the book. Today we're doing day five. And uh, of course, five is a number of um, basically five. Like when we do five times ten, it's, it's, it's jubilee. And so we believe that it's the day of release. It's a day of, of, uh, of not necessarily just, just the thought of you know that, but also deliverance. So anything that's held you captive, uh, five is the number of grace. And so it's the number of being released from things. Mm, it's the number of yes. God's favor upon your life to see things change. In the book uh, on page five, you'll see 30 different areas that God is going to do something suddenly. And so what we decided to do was 30 days of suddenly. Uh, the other night we did uh, Suddenly Souls Are Coming Into The Kingdom Day 1. Now, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we were not able to get it done uh, just because of appointments and other things. So Friday was the 21st. That was day 2. Uh, suddenly you'll receive favor. And then Saturday the 22nd was Suddenly Increase Will Come. And then su Sunday the 23rd, Suddenly Healing Will Come. And so when you look at those three things... Um, you know, the souls are coming to the kingdom. You're going to get favor. You're going to see increase. You're going to see healing. And then you're going to see deliverance. And so I'm believing God for a tremendous breakthrough in your life. Uh, deliverance and breakthrough are somewhat synonymous, basically for the same thing. And so I believe that in your life, even on the day, day five, that there are areas in your life where God is literally getting ready to cause breakthrough and uh, is getting ready to cause you to uh, increase and go to your next level. I'm just believing it's going to be tremendous. Amen. And so really excited, really, really excited about what God is doing. I want to read a passage of scripture to you uh, that was in, on page, uh, I think it's in the beginning, where God, uh, Apostle Eckhart is talking about believing God for you suddenly. And, um, and in fact, I'm gonna, do you want me to check on that while you, while you read this? Is there something going on? No yeah, sound? sound. Just is that for everybody? Is everybody experiencing sound issues? Um, yep. Uh, uh, Periscope. Oh, so somebody said Periscope is acting up. So uh, I'm going to keep going and we'll have to share it later and see how it goes. Anyway, it says, Lord, how do I access your suddenness? This is something that Apostle Eckhart wrote. He said, I began to look at the suddenness in Scripture. And I said, Lord, show me how we can receive suddenness from new. Is there something we can do that releases suddenness? Because when I study a subject, I really want to gain an understanding of it. So I asked God, what can we do to experience suddenness? What can we do that releases the suddenness of God in our life? The Lord took me to the story of Paul and Silas in jail, and they prayed and sang praises unto God. And suddenly there was an earthquake, and the jails were open. God said, my said tell my people that if they pray and praise me, I would do suddenness in their life. Many of you have been praying and praising. Say it with me. Pray and praise releases God's suddenness. I asked God, you mean to tell me that if I pray and praise you like Paul and Silas, I can receive a suddenly? And God said, yes. The combination of prayer and praise, prayer and praise, praise and prayer will reduce, uh, produce a suddenly. Pray, praise, pray, praise, pray, praise, and suddenly. Say it with me. Pray, praise, pray, praise, pray, and praise. Then suddenly. Say it one more time. And so he goes on to say it one more time. Your prayers are not in vain. Your praise is not in vain. Yes. I don't care what's going on. Even if you're in the worst condition of your life, it doesn't matter how messed up the situation is. If you will pray and praise God, uh, God will, sudden, will send us suddenly and bring you out of any situation you may find yourself in. What, that's, why my, uh, that's why praise and prayer are exactly what the devil attempts to shut down and, what you, and, and when you are in trouble. You stop praying because you don't feel like praying. Then you stop praising God. Everybody around you is standing and shouting and praising God. You're sitting there thinking, I will be glad when these folks sit down. You start to speak negative about other believers. You find yourself saying things like, she always has to run. These people get on my nerves. Every church has that one person who no matter what they have to do, they're, uh, they're running. And in your mind, you're like, I hope you sit down somewhere. I'm tired of you running. 
And so that's one of the uh, pieces that he writes about, one of the paragraphs that I really like. And uh, I begin to read the story, even of Paul and Silas. So there's two stories I want to I want to look at. I want to look at the story of Paul and Silas in Acts chapter 16 and verse 25. And it says, And at midnight Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundation of the prison was shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's bands were loose. And the keeper of the prison, uh, the prison, awakening out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had fled, had been fled. But Paul cried with a loud voice saying, Do you thyself no harm, for we are all here. And he called for a light and sprung in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And so there is, a, there is an understanding that when God delivers you, he delivers you not only for you, but he delivers you so that you can tell other people and so other people can see an example of what, what deliverance looks like, whether it's deliverance from financial situations, whether it's deliverance from, uh, you, you know, just, just uh, different situations. They were dealing with a, a serious physical prison that they were in. But when they got delivered, all of a sudden, even the keeper of the jail, the person who was responsible for keeping them, now had a, had a mindset to make sure that he was looking to to see if they were all right. And so you got to look at that. You got to think about it. You got to work through it uh, because the reality is if you will get into that place with God, if you'll get into a place with God of prayer and praise, even in the midst of your situation, in the midst of your storm, God will not only cause you to be delivered from everything that's held you back, but he will also see, he will also cause other people to see it. And when they see it, it will literally cause them to then make a decision to ask, what must I do to be saved? Right. Seeing the power of God, mm -hmm. seeing the manifestation of the demonstration of the power of God in the earth will literally cause people's Jesus. lives to be changed. Amen. Yes. And so you got to look at that. You got to think about that. You got to, you really, really, really get that in your spirit because the reality is, is that oftentimes, listen to me, oftentimes you will, you will see different situations and you will see different circumstances where people's lives are, they're in bondage and God will have brought you through something that they're going through. And the reason why God brought you through it is so that you can help them on the other end get the deliverance that they need. Amen? Absolutely. And, and so sometimes, you know, we have to be willing to be placed in situations where then we become the sign, the wonder, and the miracle. Uh, again, as he said, when people see it, when they begin to interact with you, they realize that, my God, there is a power, there is a strength on your life. There is something that they're able to witness. They're able to witness your healing. They're able to witness your deliverance. And, and so when God sets you free. Nothing else can hold you. Nothing, no prison, uh, no, no power of the devil can hold you. No sickness can hold you when God releases you. And so this is the hour that God is saying, I'm here and I'm releasing you and I'm causing you to be a witness to me. I'm causing you to be a sign in the earth. I'm causing you to be a wonder. I'm causing you to be a miracle. And so we have to be able to endure because suddenly, you, you know, one thing about suddenly, we want the suddenly, but suddenly always interrupts something. It always breaks through something and so when you want to suddenly that saying to, to, to you're saying um, in reality God I want you to interrupt something crazy that's going on in my life I need a suddenly and, and so we don't ask for a suddenly if we if we're not going through a trial if we're not you know we're not in a storm we're not in a place where we need God to move you know as we read that they needed God to move and, and so they weren't even necessarily concerned about what was going on they just chose to pray Praise God. Even in the midnight hour, they chose to bless the Lord. And they began to sing to him in songs and spiritual songs. And then suddenly, and so when we can keep our eyes focused more on God than we do our situation, that's when suddenly we'll break forth. Amen. Listen, I want to give you another scripture. And I, I'm, it's a challenge because I want to read this entire scripture. But I know sometimes reading the entire scripture can, can be a challenge. But I want, to, I want to read it to you because I think it can be a benefit to you. I think it can bless you uh, if I read it. And so this is coming out of Mark chapter 5. And many of you uh, have read the scripture, heard the scripture before. But Mark chapter 5, and it says, And uh, they came unto uh, the, other side of the, uh, the other side of the sea into the country of the Gadarenes. And when they had come out of the ship, immediately they had met a man out of the tombs with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not with chains. Because he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. And always night and day he was in the mountains and the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. 
And I begin to think about that. You know, sometimes when people are, are dealing with different uh, principalities and powers and rulers of wickedness in, in dark places, and they're struggling with things, different addictions and different demonic principalities, uh, uh, generational curses and things that their family members struggle with, it's not that they want to do that. Nobody wants to cut themselves. Nobody wants to uh, destroy themselves. Nobody wants to enjoy, uh, you know, doing things to themselves that are not conducive. But this man was in the tombs, and this, this was his situation. And in verse 6, he said, when he saw Jesus, he ran after him and worshipped him. And so even though people, you know, it's amazing. I, you know, I don't know about you, but I grew up in a family uh, where sometimes we had family reunions and sometimes people would drink. And then I've even had been around other people. I was in the military for, for 13 years, and I saw people drinking. Thank you for those that are sharing. It means so much. Thank you so much for sharing. Uh, we really appreciate that. And so, so let me tell you a funny thing. If you have family members or do you know people that they can be drunk, but when but they know the word of God? You know, I've never, I, I've got some people that I know, they could be drunk, but they know God. I'm the one I tell you that they could be drunk, but they can recite scripture. And I'm like, my God, I mean, like, like you, you, you should be doing the preaching, man, please. And so, so, you know, go places sometimes and you go around people that are drunk and boy, they can tell you what the scripture says. And so even though this man was bound, he still knew who God was. He still knew the presence of God and he came in and he began to uh, begin to worship. Amen. And uh, and so I, I began to look at this thing and I, I said, wow, that's amazing how they have it. And said, so he cried with a loud, loud voice and said, what have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. But he said to him, come out of him, or come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, what is thy name? And he answered, my name is Legion, for we are many. And he besought him much that he would not send them out of the country. Now there was there nigh unto the mountains a great herd of, of swine feeding. And all the devils besought him, saying, send us into the swine that we might enter into them. And forthwith Jesus came to them. Uh, Jesus gave them leave, and the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine. And the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea, and there were about 2,000, and they were, and they were choked in the sea. And, and they that fled of the, uh, of the swine fled, and uh, those that led the swine fled and told it into the city and the country. And they went out to see what was done. They came to Jesus to see him that was possessed with the devil, and he had a legion sitting in, uh, and clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. And they, they that saw it told them how it befell them that was possessed with the devil and also concerning the swine. They began to ask him to depart out of the coast. And when he had come into the ship, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed that he might be with him. And Jesus suffered him not. He said, go tell thy friends and tell them how great things the Lord hath done for thee and hath had compassion. And he departed and began to publish it in Decapolis, how great things Jesus had done for him and all men did marvel. See, there's a, there's a, I read that because there is a synonymous flow between what happened with Paul and Silas in the Philippian jail and what happens with Jesus. The, the reality is, number one, sometimes when people get delivered, other people are not going to like it. That's what happened with, that's why Paul and Silas were in the jail, because they had, this girl was able to do divination, and she was, re, she was, and people were making money from it, and so then as a result uh, of her uh, being able to hear things, see things in the spirit realm, uh, you know, by familiar spirits, her, her, the people that, that, that were around her were making money, and so when Jesus, uh, when Paul and Silas cast the devil out of her, now all of a sudden they got mad because they couldn't use her the way that they used to be able to use her, right. and so then and as a result, they cast them into prison. But no matter what people do to you, because of you doing what's right for God, God will always stand with you and deliver you. And so I'm telling you that today is a day of deliverance for many of you. That things that have had you bound, trials that have come, storms that have come in your life, God is getting ready to literally suddenly deliver you from those things. And even things like prisons and things like financial debt and relational issues and other things, I'm telling you today is a day of deliverance yes. for you. And our declaration and our decree, even as we come together on one accord, is that the God that we serve is releasing you from everything that's held you captive. That's our declaration. Even as it was for the man in Mark chapter 5, here he is. He's in a situation where he's been doing things to himself. He's got legions of demons. He's got stuff that's going on within him him that's causing him to be uh that, that's actually causing him to be um you know, operate contrary to the goodness of God for his life. And so then as a result, uh, you, know, you know, Jesus, you know, commands the demons to flee. Mm -hmm. They go into the swine. Well, same thing happens. People didn't like the fact that now they lost money from those swine. Amen. And the swine died in the, in the ocean instead of them being able to sell them for meat or be able to sell them for whatever they were trying to sell them for. So then we look at the situation. Jesus says, he said, so there were two groups of people that went out in this situation to make sure they sold got saved. Come on. Deliverance will cause people to get saved. Right. Deliverance will cause people to know of the, that, 
that's one of the greatest it, uh, ways of revival. Mm, Jesus, Jesus did it in, in John chapter 4 with the prophetic. Yes. But here we see Jesus doing get, souls getting saved through deliverance. Amen. Mm -hmm. And so the Bible said that the people that owned the swine went and then began to tell people in the city and in the country about what Jesus had done and how this miracle happened for this man who got his deliverance. Then the second thing that happens is the man says, well, listen, I want to go with you, Jesus. Jesus says, no, I want you to stay where you are and I want you to go and publish it. And the Bible said he began to publish it in Decapolis. Decapolis was a place with 10 towns, you know, Deca, of course, meaning 10. And so there was, there was a 10 town region where he began. So now instead of it just being one person, he lists one person who gets delivered and literally had walked around in that area, homeless and being demonically possessed, being mm. in those areas. And people had seen him. Yes. Now they're seeing him be delivered. And let me tell you something. There's some of you who people have seen you and they've watched you and they've observed you be, be held captive by the things that have held you captive. They, they've oh, seen you. Listen, Lord, like Paul said, they saw you get put into a physical prison. Mm -hmm. They saw your financial situation. They saw your debt. They saw vehicles being taken away. They saw your marriage in trouble. They saw your church going through a tough time. But those same people who saw you in a, in a tough situation, mm -hmm. God is going to cause them to see you prosper. God's going to yes. cause them. They're going to be the same people who are going to see you be free. Mm -hmm. They're going to be the same people who are going to see you literally break out of everything that's held you captive. We decree and declare that today is a day of deliverance for you and it's a day of sudden breakthrough for you out of everything that has held you captive, everything that has held you hostage, yes. everything that has literally kept you back from receiving the freedom and the liberty that belongs to you. Even as we said, today was day five and that's a day of, and, and when we put five times ten, it's 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 uh, jubilee and so we believe that every, that every 50, 50th year, it was a year of jubilee where yes. we believe that today even as it's a day five, it's a day of grace, it's a day of God's favor on your life and it's a day where God is literally Literally getting ready to release you from everything that's held you captive, everything in your mind, everything in your will, everything in your emotions, every every source of, of, of anger, fear, lust, perversion, uh, everything that the enemy has come against you with. Come on, you we're gonna break it today. We believe in God for deliverance, yes. and that everything that's held you must go now in Jesus' name. Amen. We're commanding it to go. We're commanding you to be free. We're commanding you to be loose from everything that's held you, held you, whether you were in a prison or whether you had demonic possession, whether there yes. were things that were coming against your mind, again, your will, or your emotions, I command you to be free today in Jesus', Jesus name. name. Let it be so. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I tell you that, you know, it, it's really amazing when you really begin to understand the power of God in your life, that even though there is some opposition, um, the opposition is only an indication that it's giving God an opportunity to show himself strong and mighty. The opposition gives God an opportunity to manifest himself as Jehovah Nisi, that he lifts up a standard against every enemy of your soul, every enemy of your purpose and your destiny. In the name of Jesus, nothing can stop the hand of God. When God is for you, it doesn't matter what has come against you. With Paul and Silas in prison, prison couldn't hold them because God had already released them in the name of Jesus, the woman, glory to God, that was uh, was dealing with a spirit of divination. It had to lose her in the name of Jesus. When the power of God shows up on the sea, everything else has to scatter. Glory to God with the with the with the, the man that it was concerned about, his son. Glory to God that the, the, the demons had to flee. They could not stay. They could no longer torment him. They could no longer harass him. They could no longer hurt him in the name of Jesus. Whenever the Holy Spirit shows up whenever the power of God is, is manifest. Everything has to change. Amen. Everything has to change. Though know, the same power that raised Christ from the dead, it dwells in you and it quickens you. And so you now have the power and the authority to cast out devils. You have the power and the authority, even as he gave to his disciples. He said, I give you power over these things. I give you power over demonic forces. I give you power over death. Hallelujah. So you've got to know you've got power over these things, that you are not succumb to them. They can't destroy you. They can't take you out. They can't kill <coughs> your purpose in your life. They cannot destroy your family. No, you've got power. So you speak to that situation. You decree and declare the word of the Lord over it. And, and, and it has to change in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yes. I, you know, I firmly believe that. I believe that the God that we serve is able, even as his word says, to do exceeding abundantly above yes. all that we can ask or think yes. according to the power that works in us. And I did a, uh, we did a, uh, we did in a series in our local church about faith. Mm -hmm. And uh, the thing about the faith movement, the faith thought process is that um, 
Oftentimes, we will not be persistent, consistent, and relentless in our process of believing God for something. And so you, you believe in God for deliverance for somebody. You believe in God for deliverance for, for yourself. You got to continue to, even as the one with the issue of blood, uh, one translation says that, that, she, that she said within herself. Another one says uh, that, she, that she was saying within herself. But then another one says that she kept saying within herself that, 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 God, is, that God was going to do, if she could touch the hem of his garment, that she could literally do what needed to be done. Mm -hmm. And so, Father, we just declare today and we decree and we pray Jesus. that in the name of Jesus that every yes. person that's watching this, God, that this will be a day of deliverance for them, that it will be a day of freedom for them, it will be a day of liberty for them, that everything that's held them hostage, everything that's held them uh, back, everything that's tried to stop them, everything that's tried to hinder them, mm. God, that you would literally cause Jesus. this to prosper, that, that you would cause them to prosper in every area of their life, uh, every every shackle, every fetter, we break the powers of it, God, everything that the enemy has sent against them, against their mind, God, things that they've warred with in their mind for years, mm. things that they've struggled with, things that their parents said, things that Jesus. their uh, people they were married to said, people that they were around said, God, we break the powers of things in their mind. We break the things in their emotions, things that have caused their emotions to be up and down. Every time they turn around, God, their emotions are up and down. They got emotional challenges and storms. And every time you, you turn around, you, you, know, you, you, you deal with paranoia, you deal with fear, you deal with uh, different stressors, anxieties, depression. We break the powers of hell that have come against you in those areas. And we declare that freedom is your portion. We bind the hand of the enemy. We declare that his rule, reign, and authority in your life has been rendered and void by the blood of Jesus Christ. We declare that the power of Jesus Christ reigns supreme in your life, that there is no power, there is no no, uh, no other thing that has more dominion over you and in you than Jesus Christ. We Jesus. declare it to be so. Father, we thank you even now, God, even over their flesh. God, we, pr we, we pray, Lord God, that you give them a power and a dominion over their flesh that breaks every power, every proclivity, every inclination, everything, God, that they would come and try, that the enemy would try to use to get them out of place. Father, we just declare now that God you're doing something amazing in their life like never before we declare it to be so we decree it to be so and we thank you that you've already done it in Jesus name Jesus. father we bless them and we declare that breakthrough is their portion sudden breakthrough let it be their portion now in Jesus name God we thank you Lord God that every area of their life everything that, that, that is coming against them uh, God everything that's tried to hinder them halt them held them back God every place in their life where they feel stagnant God behind time they feel like they should be a lot further in life father we pray for divine acceleration, God, that this be the season in their life where they're divinely accelerated, that they go to their next level, that they go to the places and, and they do the things that you've called for them to do, that no weapon formed against them will prosper and every tongue that rises against them in judgment. They utterly condemn it for this is the heritage of the service of the Lord and their righteousness of you. And so, God, we thank you for your word over their life. We thank you for strength. Jesus. We thank you for power. We thank you for dominion. We thank you that you're doing something for them and through them that they could not have ever imagined you being able to do. And so we bless them and we we thank you for what you're doing. We thank you. Uh, God, we, yes, as somebody said, uh, even for people that are married, uh, yes, God, we pray, Lord God, even for marriages, God, that have been where the enemy is trying to divide them and separate them. Children, God, who are, who are wayward, God, uh, even, even for children, God, who are like the prodigal son who walked away from you, walked away from their parents, walked away from their family. God, we thank you for the, those, even those, God, who, uh, who, are, who the enemy has that are, that are, that, that have left churches and ministries. Many of us that are pastors, we see members who are going through different things and God, they've literally walked away from you. They've gone through a storm. They've gone through something that disappointed them, hurt them, let them down. And as a result, it literally caused them to walk away and not come back. And so, Father, we break the powers of hell and we declare, Lord God, that even if forgiveness needs to be released, let forgiveness need to be released. If deliverance is what thing that needs to happen, Father, let deliverance happen. Let, let breakthrough happen. Let their portion, God, let them be able to do what you call for them to do and let nothing stop their progress. Let nothing stop their focus with momentum. Let nothing stop them from being free to be who you call them to be and do what you call them to do. And so, Father, we just bless you and we praise you and we magnify you in Jesus' name Jesus. for the liberty and freedom for your people, even yes. for those who are dealing with health issues and the yes. spirit of infirmity has come against them and it's caused uh, God, their physical body, God, to, be, to, 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 to have ailments and issues. Father, we declare that even today is a day of deliverance for physical body ailments and physical body issues. Yes. God, let this be that season in their life where 
every demonic principality and every demonic power that has come against their physical body would be broken now by the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. Right. Father, let a strength come upon them. Let a renewal come upon them. Yes. Let them get up out of wheelchairs, God, and off of walkers and off of canes mm -hmm. and let them walk freely like they have never walked before in the name of Jesus. God, let their, their the infirmities that have tried to grip them and stop them. Father, let those infirmities be broken now by the power of your blood. We declare that one drop of your blood can literally change right. any situation. Yes. It can save yes. any sin sick soul. It can cause deliverance for any person. God, it can literally cause people that are, that are sick to be healed. Your word declares, even as your word says, that if any be sick among us, let them call for the elders of the church. Let them lay hands on them all and they should be healed. And so, Father, we thank you that deliverance and healing, God, and the breaking of demonic principalities will be commonplace in your churches. We declare that it is so. And, Father, miracle signs and wonders will be commonplace. God, that we'll see miracles. We'll see signs. We'll see wonders in our services, in the places that we go, even as it was with Paul and, and John, I mean with Peter and John and the other disciples and when they walked through the marketplace that literally their shadow would heal people and so Father I pray for the days when uh, the apostles and the prophets and the pastors and the evangelists and the teachers would have such strong anointings that God every place we go people would be healed, they'd be set free, they'd be delivered Jesus. by the power of your spirit oh God in the name of Jesus that we'd be so full of your spirit even our shadow be anointed, God. God. In the name of Jesus, we decree it to be so, and we declare it to be so. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, we love you guys, and uh, make sure you go, and those of you who are registering for the Spiritual Warfare Academy, October the 26th and 27th, those that are going to meet us in Little Rock, we can't wait to see you there. Yes. Make sure you register for that. Then tomorrow night, we're doing Pillow Talk. We're on season two. So please let people know about that. I'm going to, you know, this midnight fire has been getting me, but I'm going to go and get some new vitamins. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'm going to get some new vitamins so I don't go to sleep as much. <laughs> Praise the Lord, I can stay up. So get your free chapter oh, of Sudden Breakthrough. Go and download it now. If you if you put in the information, then they'll, you'll get a link in an email. And so you got to put your information in. You get a link in, the e in your email. When you get your link in the email, you can download that free chapter, read it, and then go back and give us a testimony. On that page, you'll see uh, there's a page. Let me see if I can upload it. There's a page that says Sudden Breakthrough. So let's see what this page looks like. Uh, and then on that page, you'll be able to actually go back and give a testimony. So for those of you who have testimonies, who've been following us for some time, and uh, you, you, know, you can claim your free chapter here, and then you see, of course, the book and the description of the book, and then you can actually do it. But then I would love for you to go back, and if you have a suddenly testimony, remember we said we want a million suddenly testimonies, sudden yes. testimonies of suddenly and sudden breakthrough, uh, but I would love for you to go back and be able to uh, take that and fill out the form, first name, last name, email, what's your story, and then share. And so we would love for you to be able to do that. That would mean so much to us. And, uh, and so we're excited about you being able to do that. Again, it means so much to us to hear those testimonies so that then uh, we can share your testimony with people who need to be encouraged by your testimony. Yes. Your, your testimonies of breakthrough, your testimonies yes. of deliverance, your testimonies yes. of financial breakthrough, relational breakthrough. There was even one young lady on here, the Cooks, uh, that they were, they, my wife prayed for their, uh, their, their brother. And then this year, uh, not this year, but we were actually able to, uh, to, to, to see them a couple of times after that, where we did, a, we were in, I think, Huntsville, Alabama. And when we went to Huntsville, they were there and they said, your wife prayed. She, the Lord told her that God was not done with my brother. He was in a coma. He came out of the coma and he was healed. And so we've seen testimonies of where God has literally caused people to, uh, to, 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 to come out of comas. We've seen marriages restored. We've seen sickness healed. We've seen cancer heal. We've seen tumors heal. We've seen deliverance from different things. We've seen people and families be reconciled. Uh, and so we've seen God do tremendous things through the anointing that comes with this suddenly message. And so. Amen. Um, God bless you, Chanel. She said she, um, she's gotten a job. God bless you. Yes. Yes. She said she thought it was a joke feeding children at the tutoring session, but God opened a door for her. Amen. And so God is doing some amazing things. He's really superseding our expectations. He's surprising us with things that seemingly just out of the blue, but it's on purpose, in purpose and in God's timing. And so you're 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 at the right place at the right time to receive what you're believing God from from the Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, listen, we're getting out of here. We love you. I'm going to find some vitamins. <laughs>
Because, <laughs> um, you know, sometimes when you go a lot, you're depleted. And so we go yeah. so much that we, we've just, just been traveling and in and out of different places. And, uh, and so you get depleted, man. So you have to get your rest. But I think if I get just, just two more vitamins, two more vitamins, <laughs> then I'll have more strength and more energy to be able to do more. Yes. But uh, we you really love you guys. Green vegetables. Mm -hmm. <laughs> green vegetables. Did y'all see the look on my Can face? Help me get him some green vegetables. He need broccoli and asparagus and spinach. No green vegetables, people, <laughs> God. No green vegetables. We're not doing the green vegetable thing. Anyway, okay, uh, so make sure that you guys go download that, register for the Warfare Academy. Thank you for those who've sown seeds towards uh, our Suddenly in Little Rock. Some of you say, well, man, I can't go, but I would really love to support you and sow seeds yes. with you. And so thank you so much for those of you who are doing that. It really, uh, we really appreciate it. You know, we don't, we don't come on here. You won't see our PayPal information and all that stuff in our, in, in our block because we just, that's just not how we operate. But we do believe that, that uh, what, what God wants to do through us is, uh, is tremendous. And we want to see people saved. Uh, I've really, in, I've really felt a lot of the demonic principalities and stuff that are going on in that region, and I really want us to be able to go in there and minister strength to them uh, in that region and really see. Again, we've never been there to minister. Apostle Eckhart has never been there to minister. Apostle Travis Jennings was there last week. Uh, uh, Cindy, I am not listening to the nurse. The nurse. <laughs> yes. Uh, and uh, roasted veggies are fire. I might do the roasted ones. Okay. Uh, 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 Pastor, Pastor, Cindy, I don't know about all that. And so uh, I'm just messing with you. So Apostle Eckhart said he's never been the minister in Little Rock. Last weekend, Apostle Travis Jennings was at a church in Little Rock, and he said they were very hungry. And so uh, as a result, I really believe that uh, we're going to see some tremendous breakthrough in that area and in that region because of what God wants to do. Yes. Yep. So yes. we love you. We look forward to, if you know people in Little Rock, make sure that you have them to meet us there. Yes. Uh, if there are other friends, uh, um, Naked Juice has a, oh God, has a green juice that is Marvel. <laughs> I thought you were on my side, Marvel. You, you decided with the prophet, Lord have mercy. Okay, so y'all meet us at Mega Suddenly uh, in uh, in Little Rock. Yes. And then uh, the my wife has on her Fearless Women's shirt, and uh, you can see it. So, yep, so that's the, the lioness roaring and uh, yes. being fearless. And uh, that's going to be August 6th. Then we have our uh, our paint night for our college and our children on the August uh, the 5th. And uh, so I'm really excited about what God is doing. October. I really believe October 5th, I'm sorry. And uh, and then if you're in Charlotte, go to Contagious Church Charlotte. If you're in Tallahassee, we'd love to see you at our Contagious Church Tallahassee. Mm -hmm. If you're in Tampa, we'd love to see you in Contagious Church uh, Tampa. Mm -hmm. And then you can also register for our Contagious University. All the classes are online except for the one class and all of those are free. Uh, the only class that's, that you can't see is the class that I'm doing on the marketplace and in business. And I probably have bought two or three new books. You know, I love books and I love studying uh, because I want to help people break through in the area of the marketplace and see them see their lives change. My wife is doing a class on um, healing of the soul, healing of the soul, and I think that's tremendous. And then Quentin and Deborah are doing a class on worship. They're doing the School of the Prophets in Charlotte on Thursday night, and then on Tuesday night they're doing prayer intercession from Tallahassee. So I'm really believing God for just tremendous breakthrough in your life, in your family, in your finances, in your ministry, in your business, in your church, in every area of your life, with your children, in your health, every area of your life, that this is a day of deliverance, it's a day of breakthrough, it's a day that's going to be like none other in your life. We command freedom and liberty and breakthrough and deliverance to be your portion, and we speak that into your life. The, words, the Word of God says that death and life and the power of the tongue, yes. and they that love, it shall, uh, those, that, uh, that love it shall eat the fruit thereof, which means that you will receive the manifestation of the things that you've been speaking and decreeing and declaring. And the Bible also says that if you'll decree a thing and declare a thing, that God will establish it. So we're going to believe God and trust God in everything we decree and we declare that he is going to bring to pass and make come to pass for you. We love you. We bless you. Um, somebody said uh, somebody said they're going to be doing the spiritual warfare webinar. Thank you yes. so much. We're looking forward to it. I'm writing some new things in there. I'm ex-military. I spent 13 and a half years in the uh, United States Army. And so I'm going to talk about things like landmines in the in the life of a believer. I'm going to talk about things like mm -hmm. the obstacles that the enemy puts into your into your way. Uh, and, and then I'm going to share those things with you because I've seen this stuff happening. And I never correlated it to, to warfare until I thought about it one day. And I was talking to one of my spiritual sons. 
and he began, we began to talk about how the enemy puts landmines in, how he puts obstacles in, uh, obstacle after obstacle. And I'm going to tell you, even, even in, in that, the book, we're gonna, I'm going to tell you stories of battles that we got into and times when the enemy, we would be in the midst of one minefield and we were trying to breach that minefield, which is an obstacle in life. And we equate those minefields to obstacles in life. And the moment you're trying to breach one thing, you're getting fire from one direction. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you're getting fire from friendly forces behind you, people that should be supporting you in the midst of this, of this tough situation. They're not supporting you. And so simultaneously, you're in the midst of a tough situation, trying to navigate your way, trying to blow your way, trying to plow your way through it. You're getting fire from other enemies. Some, what happens when you get attacked from five different ways at one time? How do how do you handle that? Mm -hmm. then, then, then you're in the midst of this situation, and then on top of that, the enemy throws what we call a, uh, there's this what we call a scatterable minefield, and so this thing comes literally by artillery, and it comes, and it lands right on top of you while you're already in the midst of another trial. How do you endure those things? How do you stay focused and not die? And most times, people die in the midst of those kind of fights, but how do you, how do you fight your way through it? How do you, how, how do you fight your way through an ambush? When mm -hmm. something hits you and you didn't even know that it was coming nobody around you knew it was coming but all of a sudden the enemy ambushes you out of nowhere and you get hit with something that literally was meant to take you out how do you keep enduring and keep pressing through the storms and through the trials of life that the enemy sends and sends your way these are the things that we're going to talk about yes. uh in this in this whole process and so uh you know right somebody just said they were in, in this last season they got fire from every direction absolutely mm -hmm. and sometimes that happens you're getting fire from every direction friendly fire uh you get you know and so we're going to talk about how to be able to endure through the through the firefights of life how to be able to endure through the minefields of life how to endure through through the ambushes of life then what happens when you get sniper fire stuff is hitting you i have a friend of mine he says that he went to the doctor the doctors can't tell him what's wrong he said he went the 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 the, the medical situation says he it doesn't they don't know what's happening with it but he's like my god i mean and it's like everything that could come at him is coming at him Every trial, every storm that could come at him is coming at him with his natural body, but he's not able to see where it's coming from. So he's getting sniper fire. So how do you deal with sniper fire? How do, how do you locate things in the Jesus. realm of the spirit uh, yes. that are coming at you so that you can see how to stop the enemy that's coming at you? Even we were talking about the ambush. I saw on Yolanda Stiff's page the other day, she was talking about how uh, they, they, were, they got a group of people to come and try to take you out, but you're still standing. And so how do you, how do you make it through an ambush when literally five or six people People are firing at you at one time mm -hmm. and literally trying to take you out. They aim all of their fire and all their assets at you, and yes. God still gives you the strength to be able to buckle down, move through it, not stop, keep going, and we're going to give you tactics and principles to deal with with all these different situations. Amen. And so we we bless you. We thank God for you. Uh, I've never heard of anybody teach spiritual warfare from a militaristic perspective uh, with combat experience and with military experience that can talk to you about. Uh, Terrence Turner's on here. We really love him lives in South Carolina, a mighty man of God, ex-military, ex-army, and uh, just talking about how how this stuff comes and how the enemy tries to hit you and tries to take you out and destroy you. But I'm telling you, there's an anointing on you. There's a resolve on you. You have thicker armor than you realize. Uh, when battle tanks are created, they're created with a certain amount of battle armor that does not let the enemy uh, bullets and, and weaponry be able to take them out. And so uh, we're going to talk about that. How do you combine with other forces to make sure that you have a wingman? Uh, because nobody should go into battle Jesus. by themselves. You need yes. other people who are fighting with you pray for you, pray with you through things in a session and, and, and intercede and go through things with you and believe God for breakthrough and for increase and acceleration. And so we're believing God that those things are your portion. Again, that every assignment of hell that's come against you, that's come to stop you, will not be able to stop you, but that your breakthrough even is now. And so we bless you. We praise God for you. We thank God for you. And we thank you that God is going to do everything that he said he was going to do in your life. And we, we, uh, this is our declaration. Absolutely. We're not going to take it back. Amen? Absolutely. Amen. God so sign up for that, warf that spiritual warfare camp coming up. And uh, with that, I think if you get the bundle, you get, actually get the new book that's coming yes. as well. And uh, I just really believe that uh, it's going to be tremendous and that lives are really going to be impacted. Go back and listen to my wife's video from this morning uh, when she did um, the, her Monday morning prayer. Because I really believe that was tremendous and, and amazing as well. 
and uh, make sure we meet you in Little Rock. We're looking forward to seeing you and excited to see some of you that live in that area. And uh, if you're in Houston, I don't think it's far. If you're in Port Arthur and places like that, I don't think it's far. I think that's close to you. Uh, and so I think that, you know, you're close enough. And those in Memphis, I think it's about two hours away, Little Rock is. Uh, but those of you in other places of Arkansas, two hours away. So we're looking forward to seeing you and blessing you and seeing God really cause you to receive breakthrough in your life. And suddenly after suddenly, let it be your portion. We bless you now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless.